Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Spotlight. I'm your host, Jane Wynette, and joining me now are Chad Pettigo and Lisa McNeely. They're representing Bridge Communities, so welcome. Thank you for having us. Oh, we're always happy to talk to you, and I'm gonna start with you, Chad. How is Bridge Communities helping homeless in our community? Well, Bridge Communities is uniquely the largest provider of transitional housing across all of our community. And we expanded that even more so two years ago, creating two separate campuses here in Naperville. Uh, so presently, there are nine buildings and 42 families that are helping to break the cycle of poverty and work through their current homeless situation so they can become self-sufficient and independent. And what I love about when you say that is break the cycle and it's a temporary situation. And I love the way that you position that because I think that's very much about the hope, right? Absolutely, so in a emergency shelter situation, it's hard to even think about hope. You're reacting minute by minute, uh, might be staying in a different location every night, might be leaning on friends, family, but in a transitional setting, you have wraparound services, you have mentors and case managers there to help, and you know that you have a period of time, which with our program is roughly two years, where you're safe, you're secure, you can work on the things that are gonna restore that hope, restore that dignity, and give you opportunity in order to create a real positive change. Yeah. Lisa, let's talk a little bit about that because you're a graduate of the Bridge Community. Yes. So first, let's say congratulations to you on that because it takes work, yes. right? Yes, it was a lot of work. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your experience and how Bridge Communities helped you and your family. Um, for me, I came into the program, um, I have been divorced for about six years and just financially just could not get myself on my feet. I was going to school um, and just there was an episode where I was had no place to go. Um, I was told about Bridge Communities and we were taken into the program. Um, it was very hard at the beginning, um, a lot of I don't want to say I don't want to say control, but things were different. There was a lot of not necessarily quote unquote rules, but there was a a plan behind the program to help yeah. you there. Um, it was nice to be able to kind of release that stress of the financial part of it, um, knowing that I had people to turn to. Um, we did have a dog at that time that we were not able to bring into the program, but they were able to find us a foster home here in Naperville who took care of the dog so that we could visit the dog. Um, I was able to finish school, get myself a job, um, start saving. Um, the first year was the hardest because it seemed like it wasn't going anywhere. Um, but after that, things started moving. I was building a savings. Debts were paid off. Um, you know, for me, we got a gym membership at the Y. Um, things changed for us in that sense. It gave me a time to really start looking at myself and things that I needed to do for myself to make myself better. The kids were always priority, but it gave me time to be able to take time for myself and see what I need to do for myself. Um, they offered, we had family counseling. Um, there's a lot of things. Um, career, working on interviews for careers, getting, being able to get clothing for interviews. I mean, there were so many things that I would never have thought about for myself or put myself first for, and this gave me the opportunity to do that. A lot of work. Yeah. You worked hard, and yes. I think that's what people oftentimes don't realize. You found yourself in an, un, uh, an unexpected situation, mm -hmm. and, and you needed a partner to help you get to where you needed to go. And I think for me, it didn't matter what the requirements are, you know, I'm saying that I'm not in a negative way, but I was willing to do whatever it took and whatever they asked of me to get where I needed to be. Yeah. Because that was important that my kids had a home again. Absolutely. There is that incorrect assumption that when someone's homeless, it's something that they want to be in or that they're not willing to try. And that is exactly the opposite case with all of our families at Bridge Communities. Uh, every 90 days, they're re-signing an agreement with the mentors and the partners that they're working with to work towards progress to change their situation. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but there's this unseen need where we're all just a step away yeah. from something going wrong that can put us into those kinds of situations. So a lot of assumptions around homelessness that we can break those mm -hmm. and show the true face of families that are working hard, kids are in school, yeah. working several perhaps part-time or full-time jobs at low wages mm -hmm. that really just need a little bit of assistance and it can completely and holistically change their lives. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say for me it was important that I finished school because 
when I got divorced, I could not find a job making more than $9 an hour. And how do you support a family like that? If something happened to my car, th there was nothing I can do. I had no way to take care of it. So just that opportunity to not have those worries and know that whatever I needed, I mean, as, as simple as if we, we were standing up in a wedding and I needed a pair of shoes, that someone reached out and bought us a pair of shoes. Like the simplest things, but they mattered not having to take from me so that I can put as much of myself into the program. Yeah, and, and I would think too, it, it's, you know, you want your children, you're trying hard to keep mm -hmm. your everything together for your children. And, sure. and that's, that's a lot of responsibility. And particularly when you find yourself in those situations unexpectedly, it, it, it throws so many pieces off, as you said, Chad. It's, we're, we're all not that far away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you want a one bad incident and a lot of us can find ourselves in places we did not ever expect to find ourselves in. So. Well, and I had told Chad earlier too that for those years that we, I was struggling financially, trying to find any program to help a single mom, it just wasn't there. And I, I mean, it was constantly telling the kids, things will get better, things will get better, and they just weren't. And that's very disappointing as a mom to say that to your kids. Absolutely. And like, single parents are hit the hardest. Uh, when course. you're an army of one trying to support your children, which many of our clients are um, in most cases, mm -hmm. and uh, some that are fleeing domestic violence situations, so add an additional level of difficulty to it, uh, there really aren't a lot of resources that are readily available to help you change that circumstance. Yeah. So we seek to fill that gap and give an opportunity to just catch your breath for a moment first, but then lay out the plan and the groundwork to really change the situation from the ground up. Well, and you've been working a program, I mean, to your point, Lisa, in terms of having structure around it, you have a program that you know works, yeah. so you continue to work that program, right? Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit, if you would, about the impact it's had on your children. Um, the first year was very hard for them. I would say they were depressed, but they also came from a situation that they were coming out depressed. Um, my son was starting high school, which was really hard for him because we had moved to another town where he was starting to make friends and then we had to move again and we moved here to Naperville. So he really struggled his freshman year um, with the Y membership going into his sophomore year. He had said, I want to change. We started getting up at five o'clock in the morning, going to the Y, changing his eating habits. He lost 60 pounds, totally different kid. Yeah. Um, my daughter still struggled a little more, but you know, she was a younger teen. She had a lot of anxiety. Um, but as the program progressed and they saw that things were changing and that we were looking at buying a house and you know we had these goals and seeing that that was going to happen, that made such a difference for them. And being able to walk into their, their own home is just like was such a relief for them getting their dog back yeah. and then getting another dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're just, they're great children. They're very thankful. My, they tell me all the time, thank, Thank, they tell me all the time, thank you for everything that we've done. And I was just telling Chad too that my son said to me a couple weeks ago, I will never change, I would never change what we went through. We may not liked, have liked each other. We may have had a lot of issues, but to see where I am today and who I am makes a big difference. And what his goals are for pushing him to what he wants for life. Where he's going. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, my daughter's just, driving and that just is amazing to see her feel even more happy because now she's not confined to the house and depending on somebody else so yeah. she's joined orchestras at school she's dancing so and she's back to that what she loved to do and that was an opportunity that she was able to do while in bridge that they provided that she could go and take dance classes have as much so. normalcy as possible yes yes, yes. Chad, we're wrapping up really quickly. Uh, I know that you want to give a shout out because you partner with a lot of other agencies. Of Will course. you just give us a quick shout on that? Yeah, uh, ways to help uh, too is also important. Yeah. So ways to get involved, uh, you can be a mentor, a tutor, a donor of course. Uh, get involved in our upcoming Sleep Out Saturday program that's on November 3rd. So it's experiencing homelessness for one night in the cold but it can completely change an entire family's future. Uh, there's tons of information on our website so I know we're short on time but be sure to check that out, see different ways to get involved, to reach out to me, and then of course to your point, community partners, yeah. we wouldn't be here without them. So working with other programs to those wraparound benefits, get those to the families, uh, Loaves and Fishes, Samaricare, uh, the local rotaries, the Junior Women's Club, so many organizations step forward when they know that we have 
40 plus homeless families in this community that need assistance to find unique ways to help make a difference in their lives towards positive and uh, great opportunities and a brighter future. Yeah, well thank you for all that you're doing at Bridge Communities. Lisa, thank you for sharing your story. Congratulations and kudos to you. Thank you. Uh, you're a wonderful testament and a great impact story for the work that Bridge is doing. If you would like to learn more about how you can support Bridge Communities, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight.